All right, we're sneaking off for a little hike. She's all loaded down. Barely anything. She says her pack's too heavy, and she's making me too heavy. I just she's said making me heavy. carry this. She says take everything. Take everything that I don't want to carry. I said my pack was heavy too. I didn't say my pack was too heavy. We are at Lake Isabel. We're gonna go on a little hike. It's really nice out today. It's supposed to be 57 and it's snow covered, but beautiful out. So we will pick this up later. We're pushing on without our spikes for right now. We brought them. Got pretty good traction with our boots. A lot of snow up here. Normally you can drive this road, but it's closed for the season. So to get to the trailhead, you gotta hike about a mile in this before you actually get to start your hike. I'm not gonna lie, this first part of the hike sucks. Choose not to put my spikes on. Makes it a little bit slicker. And we've decided by looking at our surroundings, most of this road is about a foot deep in snow. But it's warm. I have a light jacket and a baseball hat on and I am sweating ready to start peeling layers off but we are at the Cisneros trailhead
I know the camera doesn't always show it, but it's a pretty steep hike, hike and it's, I call it leg day with my 40 pound, <laughs> my 40 pound pack on in between the snow. We had to get our trekking poles out and put our little snow tops on them. But it's so quiet. It's a beautiful hike. I think we're the only ones up here. That's funny. It looks like a skull. <laughs> it's definitely deep. Deep snow and a very narrow trail. Well, we've been coming up from that direction and quite a ways down there. You can kind of tell where the last set of snowshoes stopped and they turned around and we've been following a makeshift trail with animal tracks. But now you get up here and it's fresh snow has covered the trail and all there are is animal tracks. So we're gonna keep pushing through my guess is we're probably three quarters of a mile, half a mile to three quarters of a mile to the mine site. So I'd like to push up there and see how far we can get, but it all depends on how deep the snow gets. Okay, we pushed on. We're still just following one set of animal tracks, but we hit the high point. Ugh. I don't know if you can hear it, but the wind has definitely picked up. 
always seems like you get closer to 10,000 feet here and it's just windy and it's cold sun went away but we're gonna make our way down and I believe that's the Aspen Grove we'll hike through so we are getting closer to the mine some really cool rock formations it's kind of cool being on a hike when you're the only footprints this stuff is really neat And the views here really a lot of snow on the ground now we make our way down but I think we're getting close to the mine. So we'll check back in a little bit.
Well, we reached the first little private cabin. This one's really neat, but it is private property. But you pass by here and you'll continue on to the mine. Just a neat location. The snow has really gotten deep. I'm not gonna lie, this is a very tough hike in the snow. Not bad in the summer. I will say from that first private cabin, you're better off to have snowshoes. But I'm glad we have spikes on our feet. The trail's like closed off. Nobody's really been over to the mine or following what was a snowshoe. Somebody snowshoed up here, but it's been a while. But uh, trekking poles are sinking quite a bit, at least a foot down if you step a couple inches the wrong way. Well, we made it to the mine. We're on top of it. It is so, it's so peaceful up here and quiet. We did come across a set of moose tracks when we went through the aspen grove, which was kind of interesting. This is so cool. It's so muddy getting up there with our spikes on and so much rock. I think we'll wait till summer and we're going to come back and we'll explore further up. I'd like to get closer to that top of that mountain right there. But, from where we parked at Lake Isabel, we hiked five miles to right here. And it's 14.10 in the afternoon, so we're going to have to make our way back down shortly so that we can finish this hike in the daylight. So we should end up with a 10 mile hike today. There's a bird that is nesting over there that is, has been yelling at us since we got here. And then he disappears into the rock, which is kind of cool. The 
the snow is very deep. But if you were to continue this way, and go through the trees there, it leads to a waterfall. And it appears as though when you're standing there, you can hike up and kind of disappear up into that little draw. really a cool place. Let me check my altitude. All right, we're at 9721 up here at the top of the mine. And today is February 1st. So if you're curious, yeah, you can hike up here in the winter time. But also as of this morning, we're only at about 82% of our annual snowfall. So one big storm could make this impassable. doing her journal entry. <laughs> I don't know the story of this cross. I'm not sure if there's actually someone buried here. It almost would appear that as people come here they place a rock on top of it so let us add our little rock as a tribute to what may be here or who all right that is it we're gonna take a break and wrap things up and we're gonna make our way back down We are making our way down and off in the distance is the frozen Lake Isabel. You can see out to the plains. Not sure if we can see the lake better down here.
I've got a very narrow trail to walk on. Trekking poles you use, usually find the one foot drop and then you just kind of gamble with your steps. Yeah, you can kind of see the frozen lake down through the trees there. There it is. And if you go that way, is St. Charles Trail. It's still gorgeous out. That sun's going to start dipping behind the trees in the mountain before too long. And we're going to be trapped in the dark. Spooky. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.